Pope Francis in a white puffer jacket, Emmanuel Macron picking up trash, or Donald Trump forcibly arrested by police. These images have made their way around the world, but all of them are fake. They're generated using artificial intelligence. To produce them, you only need a few words. The possibilities are endless. Each result is unique and can illustrate any situation, whether it's real or fake. We've clearly reached a new level. We're creating the conditions for a society of distrust. This will give rise to more doubts. The human brain is not capable of apprehending the scale of this artificial intelligence. Could things get out of hand? Yet these programs seem to have a serious weakness, hands. The fingers are often too numerous or bent in an unusual way. So can this flaw save us from misinformation? To answer this, we must first understand why these programs have so much trouble generating hands. While we're at it, let's ask an artificial intelligence software this question. ChatGPT is an AI chatbot that converses with users. We just have to write our question and it'll answer. The program highlights several elements. First off, the complex shape and structure of the hands. More than a quarter of the bones in the body are found in the hands. It's a complex ensemble, capable of taking on very different forms. Even the greatest artists had to study them at length before reproducing them in their most memorable works. GPT points out that even Leonardo da Vinci mentions this difficulty in one of his notebooks. The painter describes the movement of the hands as very difficult to express in words, although it is one of the most important things in drawing. For artificial intelligence, it's even more complicated. This is directly related to how AI functions. To obtain these pictures, the program had to learn two things. First, how to generate images. If you zoom in, you can see that an image is composed of colored squares, pixels. Together, they form our perception of a drawing or a photo. This image is composed of 1,000 pixels in width and 700 in height. That makes 700,000 in total. The challenge is artificially generating these thousands of pixels and arranging them in a coherent and realistic way for humans. To train the program, the researchers use a reference image like this. They gradually degrade the image by adding what's called noise. After a while, not much is left of the original version. The scientists then reverse the process by asking the machine to remove the noise. The program starts here and tries to reconstitute the pixels of the previous version. By trial and error, it ends up finding the expected configuration. It then transfers what it has learned to each layer of the network until it restores the original image. By practicing on billions of images, it learns to predict how pixels are arranged and how to transform the noise into a coherent image. This process is called diffusion. The second lesson involves connecting the text and the image, knowing that this command corresponds to this result. To achieve this, researchers use huge databases composed of images and text that describe their content. There are billions of them, and these programs have spent hundreds of thousands of hours training on them. Their mission is to find patterns in the way the pixels are arranged. They will discover, for example, that this configuration generally corresponds to an apple, and this one to an orange. They also analyze how these pixels interact with other configurations. For example, a metal bowl. These exercises allow the program to understand the many features that make up an image. 
its style, its textures, or the level of light. Observations that go far beyond the pixel-by-pixel -pixel analysis and that make up what is called the latent space representation of an image. At the end of the training, the program is able to confidently predict the photo that matches each description. And that's where the magic happens. Because once the program is able to make the link between the text and the image, researchers can give new text examples and ask it to use Diffusion to generate a new image, even an impossible one, based only on a text. And the possibilities are endless. What is important to understand is that the program does not generate a montage using existing images. It generates new combinations based on the way the pixels are arranged statistically in the databases that it uses. So the result is different each time. But this is also where the software's flaw comes from. It doesn't truly understand what it's drawing. For an AI, hands are just a combination of pixels, statistically arranged at the end of another combination called an arm. It doesn't understand what a hand is. It's three-dimensionality, anatomy, and the way fingers interact. Its knowledge is limited to two-dimensional images in these databases. If this data does not contain enough examples, it may have difficulty generating accurate depictions. In these images, the face is very present and always displayed in the same way. Two eyes, a nose, and a mouth. The hand is more discreet and can take very different forms. Finally, the text rarely refers to it. Here, we are not talking about the way fingers hold the camera, but simply a smiling woman. So, inevitably, when the software has to generate a similar request, it improvises. On closer inspection, other elements don't fit. The woman has too many teeth, Donald Trump has one leg too many, and the text is completely incoherent. For now, these are good tips for checking an image's accuracy. Except that's about to change. In March 2023, the company behind this software released an update in which the rendering of hands was improved. The lab remains vague about the methods used, but experts assume that the program has been specially trained on images of hands. This gives it more material to refine its creations. Others are developing three-dimensional image generators. Even if they are not yet successful, a better spatial understanding of the hand could eventually result in a better 2D rendering. At this rate, it's likely that these programs will one day master generating hands, making it no longer possible for the naked eye to discern the real from the fake. But this confusion doesn't only apply to images. ChatGPT, which has served as our guide since the beginning of this video, is also trained on huge databases. Billions of texts teach it to predict the words of a sentence, even if the sentence isn't actually true. Let's take, for example, this quote from Leonardo da Vinci, mentioned at the beginning of the video. Well, it doesn't exist. It doesn't appear in the notebook in question, and we have not been able to find it elsewhere in his work. It seems that GPT simply invented it. Faced with the many concerns raised by these tools, authorities are already working on developing a legal framework. And this will have to happen quickly, because these tools attract more and more users every month. 
And in February 2023, ChatGPT recorded 1 billion visits to its site.